There are many different kinds of flow meters in the way that we can measure flow, and we're going to look at three of them. And these three are classified as the Bernoulli obstruction devices. What a Bernoulli obstruction device does is it obstructs the flow, and then it causes a pressure drop across the obstruction that we can measure. Let's take a look here. Um, I have a generalized pipe. You can see I've got my two uh, pressure taps on it. We can take a look at it. And you can see right in here we have our obstruction. And then we're measuring the pressure before and then after the obstruction. And so we do have a pressure drop down uh, across that, as you can see with our dip in our hydraulic grade line. So we make a couple of assumptions when we're dealing with this. And we're going to assume... We're basically going to assume that Bernoulli's equation is valid because we're going to be using Bernoulli's equation to set this up. Now, as we're using Bernoulli's equation, obviously one of these assumptions is inviscid, which means there's no friction, which is not real. We'll take care of that later with um, we'll take care of that later with a constant that'll take care of that. So we've got a steady in inviscid incompressible flow, and we're also going to assume that it is horizontal, so that way we don't have to take care of any, any Z component. So now that we've assumed this is valid and we're able to use Bernoulli's equation, let's apply the conservation of mass equation, because I know whatever Q coming in is going to be equal to whatever Q is coming out. And so that's just equal to the velocity times the area. So I have pi over 4, large d squared, is my area times the velocity at point 1, is going to equal all this stuff at point 2, small d squared, v2, oops. And then the pi over 4s are going to cancel out. And then what I'm going to want to say is that V1, we're going to isolate that out, is going to be equal to D over D squared times V2. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to plug this into Bernoulli's equation. So let's write Bernoulli's equation over here. Pressure at 1 plus rho over 2 V1 squared. I'm not going to write out the Z term because we're assuming it's horizontal, so our Ds are going to cancel out. Yeah, but let's here, let's write that in. Gamma Z1 is equal to P2 plus rho over 2 V2 squared plus gamma Z2. So horizontal flow, those are all going to cancel out. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this term here. I'm going to plug it in for my V1 here. And then I'm going to solve it for V2. So if you churn through all of the algebra for that, what you're going to end up with is that V2 is equal to 2 times the pressure difference, P1 minus P2, over rho times 1 minus D to the fourth, large D to the fourth, And then we're going to take the square root of that whole thing. So now we have a term for V2 that's completely just in terms of things that we can easily measure. Because we can easily measure the pressure drop, we can easily measure the geometry, we can easily measure what the density of the fluid is. And so we'll have to remember, though, that V2 is also equal to Q divided by A2. So we can look at this now and can completely get rid of V2 because what I care about and what this is measuring is the flow rate. So we can say that Q2 is equal to A2 times all of this stuff that we just defined. So 2 times P1 minus P2 over rho 1 minus D to the fourth, capital D to the fourth, and all that to the one half. So we can clean up this equation a little bit. 
Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to continue our classical Greek education, and we're going to use capital beta, and we're going to define capital beta as D over D. So that relationship of the area, the diameter of the obstruction to the diameter of the pipe. And the second thing that we're going to do is typically we talk about A2, we're going to find A2, define A2 as AT, which is the area of the throat. Now the area of the throat, that's typically what we call the smallest point of the obstruction device is the throat of the device. So let us rewrite this equation. And it's not really Q2, it's just Q. Now, as you're writing it, leave a little bit of space right here because we're going to put one more term in. So the area of the throat times 2 minus 2 times the pressure difference divided by density, 1 minus beta to the fourth, all of that to the 1 half. So that would be the flow rate equation for a perfect device one that is steady and viscid and compressible horizontal. As we know, you're not going to get an inviscid flow in real life. There will be some friction. So what we add is we add C sub D. And so C sub D is what's called a discharge coefficient. And so that takes care of all of the frictional losses and whatnot. That will be given to us by the manufacturer, or we can look up and estimate what it's going to be. So typically what will happen is if you have a device where we're using an obstruction flow meter, it really may not be in this whole form. It may be in the form of a number times whatever pressure difference that you measure. Because the company, when they set it up, they're going to know what their discharge coefficient is, their area of the throat. They're probably going to know what fluid that you're using, or the fluid might be, the density might be left in there. They're going to know what beta is, so really the only unknown is pressure difference. So they just take everything and jam it all into one constant, and then you just measure the pressure difference and go, okay, this is what it is. So let's take a look at the three major classifications of devices, and we're going to start with a thin plate orifice. This is the cheapest of all of the Bernoulli obstruction devices, but you also have the most head loss. And the reason it's cheapest, it's basically just a piece of sheet metal that you're punching a hole into. And as you can see, here it is, just a sheet metal with a hole. We can look at the discharge coefficients. Why does it cause a lot of head loss? Well, the stuff that's coming through here is fine, but then you get fluid that jams and just smacks a right along the front there and so then it's got to find its way through you've got large areas right here where you're going to get a small vacuum which is going to cause the flow to kind of bend back through so it's really bad for flow rates but it's really cheap and so it gets seen a lot of use and you can see over here you can estimate the discharge coefficient here's your discharge coefficients versus rental number and your beta values so if we want to step up a little bit from that, we have the flow nozzle. Now the flow nozzle is a nice compromise. It's typically a piece of shaped sheet metal, and it directs the flow a little bit better. It comes out as a nozzle a little bit more to kind of help with that flow coming around the side. It helps direct the flow a little bit better because of the chamfers. You still have a spaces where the flow is going to bash in here. You're still going to have flow coming around the side, but it's a much better, much less impactful device than the flat plate orifice. Since it directs the flow better, but it also costs more money. So the last one we have is a Venturi tube. And if you rotate this around the center line, you'll see you get this kind of neat little cone thing. This is the shape of a wind tunnel, just as an aside. Uh, so wind tunnels use the Venturi tube. And the Venturi tube will impact the flow the least. But, of course, it's going to cost the most amount of money. And so, as you can see through this tube, it opens up and expands. So there's no losses on the backside. 
you're going to get a little bit when it hits there but for the most part it's really made to direct the flow as easily as possible with, with the fewest losses as possible and then here we go this would be the curve for to calculate out the discharge coefficient with the venturi tube